It's been a while since I've posted a video, but in that time, I've been learning Fast64 and Hacker Suit Mario 64, and let me tell you, I have fallen in love with Fast64. This tutorial will show you how to add 3D coins to your ROM using Fast64 and Hacker Suit Mario 64. So if you don't already have a repository set up, I'd advise you to check out the GitHub page to learn how. The link is in the description. So once your repository is set up, you will then be able to begin. The first thing you need is Fast64. If you already have it, you can skip ahead a little bit, but Fast64 is an add-on for Blender, so once you've downloaded it from here, the link is also in the description, you will want to open Blender. Go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and then you'll be able to click Install up here, and then you'll find your zip folder and click on that, and then it should be done installing. And then you can go to the search bar up here and type in Fast64, like I had already done, and then make sure that this box is checked. That means it is enabled. You can also make sure that this box is checked for auto check for update. And you can click this now if you want to check for an update, which you'll see mine is currently already up to date. So we can close out of this. Pressing N on the viewport will pull up these tabs. You'll see these new tabs, SM64, and Fast64 have appeared. Click on the SM64 tab. From here, you want to check Show Importing Options. You can pull this out if you want to read it better. Here, you can select the ROM you will be using to import from. It is advised that you use a ROM that has been expanded with ROM Manager. To do that, you will need a base ROM of Sukmar64 and ROM Manager. The link to that tool is in the description. All you have to do is open ROM Manager and select your ROM and allow it to prepare the ROM for you. Once it's done, you can close this and go back to Blender. Now you can select your import ROM. Right underneath that, you will want to select the main folder of your hack repository. That is the folder with the name of what you want your ROM to be called. I recommend going to the Fast64 tab and unchecking Export Hidden Geometry. This is not particularly useful for coins, but can be very helpful when making levels, as it makes testing a lot easier without you having to delete things, but this is entirely up to you. Go back to the Super Mario 64 tab, and from here you will open the Super Mario 64 Geo Layout Importer. Here you are going to need the start address for the coins, which can be found on this website, which is also in the description. This website is very useful for replacing any object with Fast64, as it has all the geo layouts you might need. Pressing Ctrl F will bring up the find in page search bar, and typing in yellow coin will bring us to what we need. At the top of this list, you'll find the ROM address. You'll want to copy that and open a calculator, preferably one that can convert to hexadecimal. Making sure that you're in decimal mode, paste in that number and add the number to the left of the yellow coin, which is 316. That gives us this number. Now we want to see what that is in hex. My calculator shows it right here. So now we know that the start address is 218EDC. We can copy that and go back to Blender. Back in Blender, we can type or paste this number in the start address box. I have found that the level selected down below is not important when importing object geo layouts, so we don't need to worry about that. Now we have a square, which is the coin model, and the armature attached to it. This square will let us know how big our coin model will be. If you already have a coin model you would like to use, you can import it now but you can also make one in Blender if you'd like. If you imported your coin model from something else, you want to convert the material or materials to the format Fast64 understands. Luckily, you can do this easily by clicking on the Fast64 tab, then under F3D Material Converter, clicking Principled BSDF to F3D Converter. Now your materials should be in the correct format. I'd advise you to keep your try count below 200 if you can, as the more polygons the model has, the more likely the game is to lag, and that will heavily impact console performance if that matters to you. I've pasted in my coin model, and you'll see that it has 
156 tries. At the bottom of the screen, it'll show it here. You want to make sure that there are no vertex groups or modifiers assigned to your model, and also make sure that it's not parented to anything. In order to check that, you can go to the Modifiers tab here. If there's nothing showing, then you're in the clear. If there are no vertex groups, then you're good. And to make sure it's not parented to anything, you can click on Object Properties and scroll down to Relations you'll see that there are no parents in mine. Now you'll want to select your new coin mesh, and while holding shift, select the old coin mesh, and then press Control J to join them. You may notice that if your coin model had sharp edges before, it won't now. The best way to fix this is to go to Object Data Properties, Normals, check Auto Smooth, and I like to bring it all the way up to 180 so that it only reads my hard edges. You can go into Material Preview by holding Z and moving your cursor down to Material Preview. Letting go of Z will bring it into Material Preview. You may have noticed that my coin is shiny, and this is because I'm using an environment map. If you're new to Fast64 and the way Super Mario 64's materials work, an environment map is what Metal Mario's material uses, which essentially makes the texture always face the camera while on an object, to keep it simple, which results in the object looking shiny. If you would like to know how to do this for your coin model, with your mesh selected, head over to the Material Properties tab. You'll most likely have two or more materials here if you imported a model, and the one with this title, the F3D Light material, can be deleted as we don't need that anymore, because that is what the original coin model was using. In fact, we don't need the original coin model anymore, so we can go into Edit Mode, go to Face Select, and select the two faces of the original coin model and delete those. We can now exit edit mode. Now with the material you want to use selected, you'll see this drop down menu for presets. Clicking on it will give you options, and we want the environment map. Once that's selected, you can open the texture you'd like to use here. We are starting with the yellow coin, so choose whatever texture you want to use for that, and make sure the format is RGBA 16-bit. Once your texture is assigned to the model, you should have a coin that looks shiny. I found that coins like this one don't really need a 32 by 32 texture to look good, so I'm just using a 16 by 16 texture. Now that materials are done, you can go to the Object Data Properties tab and scroll down to the UV maps. Make sure that there is only one UV map for your mesh and that it is named UV map with no spaces. Make sure it is a capital U, V, and M. This is required for it to work. Now you'll want to go into edit mode. For the object to be exported, all vertices of the mesh must be assigned to a vertex group. Up here, you'll see the 000 display list vertex group, and since we deleted the original coin model, nothing is currently assigned to this one. So select all by pressing A, and then click assign now that that is done, your model is ready to go. The last thing you need to do is go to the World Properties tab and make sure the world is set. This needs to be set or the export won't work. In the Super Mario 64 tab, you'll need to open the Super Mario 64 Geo Layout Exporter. Change the group name to Common 1 and the folder name to Yellow underscore coin and the geo layout name to yellow underscore coin underscore geo. Originally all the coin geo layouts are in the same folder under the name coin but for these to work they have to be exported to unique folders for each color. So this will create three new folders for the coins. I have yet to find a way to import 3D coins that work with vertex colors like the original coins but my current method works just fine. Once those are set Select the armature, which is the bone here, and click Export Armature Geo Layout. If it worked, you'll see a message at the bottom that says Success. If it didn't work, try going back and making sure you've done everything correctly. If you're still having issues, feel free to leave a comment and I'll do my best to help. Now it's time for the red and blue coins. Go back to your material and replace the current texture 
with the one you want to use for the red coin. Then go back to the Sumar64 tab and change yellow in the folder name and geolayout name to red. Once that's done, make sure the armature is selected and export armature geolayout. Do the same for your blue coins. Now we're done in Blender. You can do these next steps either in Visual Studio, which is a free program designed for coding, or just your notepad. Visual Studio is advised, and it's much cleaner and quicker, but notepad works fine. In your repository, go to the data folder and open behaviordata.c. You want to find all behaviors relating to coins, which include behavior yellow coin, behavior temporary yellow coin, single coin get spawned, hidden blue coin, moving yellow coin, moving blue coin, blue coin sliding, blue coin jumping, red coin, Mr. I blue coin, coin inside boo, and coin formation spawned coin. You can find these by pressing Control F and typing these names in. I'll type in behavior yellow coin. We'll see this here. This is the one we want. When there's the behavior script behind it, that means it's a new behavior. With each behavior, remove the billboard right here and replace the add int anim state one thing right here, which only shows up in some of these behaviors. So if it's not there, you can still put what I'm about to say in that place, even if it's not there. So if that is not there, we can still add a new line, which is as follows, add underscore int, I'll just call it int, and then parenthesis, lowercase o, and then face angle yaw, and then comma 0x600. Make sure there's another parenthesis at the end, and you put a comma. So remember, even if you don't see the set int anim state 1 that we had seen in some others, you can still put this here because this is what makes the coin spin with the 600 being the speed they spin at. So if you want them to spin slower, make the number smaller. If you want them to spin faster, make the number bigger. Once all those behaviors have been changed, make sure the file is saved and you can close this if you'd like. Now head into the actors folder and scroll down until you find common one underscore geo dot C. You'll see at the bottom that there are three geo layouts that are separated from the rest. These are the ones that were added to this file when we exported our coins. Since the game is not reading one geo layout for all the coins anymore, we can tell this file to ignore the original coin geo layout by adding two slashes. Like this. Make sure to add a space after, then save. There are a few other things we need the game to ignore, so head over to the levels folder and open scripts.c. Now search for coin underscore no underscore shadow. And we'll do the same thing we did before with the slashes to these geo layouts. Add the slashes to yellow coin no shadow, blue coin no shadow, red coin no shadow, silver coin, and silver coin no shadow. Now head to the SRC folder, then game, then behaviors, and open the coin.inc.c file. Find behavior coin formation spawn coin loop, all those having underscores underneath. You can just put in bhv underscore coin underscore form and it'll show up right down here you'll see model yellow coin no shadow you should remember that we made the game ignore the no shadow geo layouts and model IDs so we need to change this to model yellow coin 
This will make coin formations spawn the right kind of coins so they spawn the coins actually in the formation they're supposed to be in. Without changing this, all the coin models will spawn in the center of the formation, but they'll still be collectible in their normal positions. The 3D coins are now done, but there's one last step. Currently the red coins that show on the pause screen are the original 2D ones, so I'll show you how to remove those and make a red coin counter that shows on the hood so you can always see it. I haven't figured out how to make the 3D red coins show up on the pause menu yet, so the hood was my alternative solution, and I figured people would find it more convenient to have it on the hood anyway. In the same game folder we were just in, open the in-game menu.c file and find print animated red coin. You can put in print underscore anim and it'll come up. If you look just a little lower, you'll find these cases that are listed 0 through 7. Right above that is the global timer and 0 times 7. What we need to do, do and what we need to do, do and what we need to do is remove the and 0 times 7. Just like that. This makes it not read the cases beneath it, those cases being the textures that it switches through for the spinning coin animation. We could delete this whole thing, but it's best to keep it if you ever want to use this code for something or if you want to revert back. Now we can make the red coin counter for the hood. Still in the game folder, you need to open hood.c and hood.h. In hood.c, search for hood underscore coins. Really hope I'm pronouncing it right and people don't actually pronounce it H-U-D because that would be kind of embarrassing. You'll want to copy all the way from the top slash asterisk, asterisk, that's a hard word to say, down to the last bracket, just like this. So we'll copy that. At this bracket, we'll push enter twice and then paste this in. Now you can change this green text from coins to red coins just to keep things tidy, but you really don't even need this green text here. Also, where it says render hood coins, we will change that to render hood red underscore coins. Now we're going to change the coordinates. Keep in mind that some of this will be different depending on where you want your red coin counter to be on screen, but I'll be showing you how to put it on the bottom left like I did in my latest Castle Grounds remake. You want to change these three hood coins x here to hood red coins x. Making sure that you keep the underscores following the same format. With these changed, it will make the x value be determined by a new coordinate that we have to set in the hood.h file. We will do that soon. Now change the three hood underscore top underscore y to hood underscore bottom underscore y, which will move it to the bottom as the name suggests. Now you will change this g hood display dot coins to g red coins collected. And this dollar sign here to the at symbol. This will make it show how many red coins are collected and the at symbol changes the coin icon to a red coin icon. Hacker Super Mario 64 includes a red coin and blue coin icon for uses like these which is very helpful. Now we need to set the red coin counters x value so we need to go to the hood.h file. At the top you'll see these hood coins x and hood stars x values. We need to copy the coins one and paste it right below. Then change the 168 value to 22. And rename it to hood underscore red underscore coins underscore x, just like we named in the hood.c file. This will move the red coin counter to the same x coordinate as the life counter, which you may notice isn't there when you load the ROM. And that is because Hacker Suit More 64 disables lives by default. If you want to move the red coin counter more to the left, you can just bring this number down. The last thing we need to do is actually make this show up in the game. So we're going to go back to hood.c and search for hood underscore coins again until we head here. Make sure it looks just like this. 
you'll want to copy the whole render hood coin segment here from if down to the blue bracket push enter twice and then paste it rename this to red coins if you want the coin or red coin counters or both to always show instead of not being visible in some places like the castle you can delete the hood display flag parts of the two counters right here. So if you want them always to show up, this is what it should look like. But I'm going to leave it like this for now. Now that this part is done, make sure everything is saved. If you want to change the coin icons, you can find them in the textures folder, then in the segment 2 folder. It won't be able to show in Visual Studio since this is just for coding, but they're all here. You can see the red coin name, silver coin name, yellow coin name, and the blue coin is right up here. And now we're finally all done. You can build your ROM and test this out. If you have any issues or requests for future tutorials, put them in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to you. If you'd like, you can join my Discord server as well, and if you need extensive help, I'd be happy to help you there, but I can't promise I'll be able to answer every question, as I'm still fairly new to all this. A benefit of being on Discord is that we can exchange screenshots, which is not something you can do through YouTube comments. I'll be sure to make follow-up videos if I ever figure out better ways to do 3D coins. But I think this is alright for now. That's all. Bye.